the arrival of the first components on the ITER site in summer 2014 will be the starter pistol for rolling out the assembly master plan. A very detailed script that will help to orchestrate one of the most complex stage shows ever performed. The ITER assembly commences with the installation of the cryostat base, followed by the nine 40 degree sectors of the vacuum vessel, the surrounding thermal shields, the superconducting magnets, and finally the cryostat. Then, having checked the correct alignment of all these parts, the installation of ITER's in vessel components can begin. Among the first components to be installed inside the naked vacuum vessel are the diagnostic looms supplying the many different diagnostic sensors that help to observe and control the plasma performance. These systems, directly attached to the inner wall of the vacuum vessel, comprise some 800 individual installations. The looms will be introduced through the machine's equatorial ports using a set of custom-made tools, platforms and cranes. Next in line are the vertical stability coils that will provide fast vertical stabilization of the plasma. Each of these coils will be delivered in 120 degree sections with an approximate weight of 1.5 tons each. Each coil section is transferred from the assembly hall to the port cell using special purpose trolleys capable of manipulating the coil and allowing it to pass through the port cell area. Once inside the vessel, the coil sections will be rotated by 180 degrees and brought into position. A rotation mechanism will be supported from a winch on the installed support crane, connecting to the coil's strong back. It is then maneuvered into a temporary assembly position and located onto a waiting fixtures that allow for the joining of the coil sections. This process requires precise alignment of 0.1 mm, followed by a brazing, testing and welding campaign carried out manually that will last approximately five months. Once the pieces have been joined and tested for their leak tightness, they will be raised or lowered into their final position for connecting to their feeders. The next components to be installed are the ELM coils and their feeders. They will help control plasma instabilities called edge localized modes, hence ELMs. There are three such coils foreseen for each of the nine vessel sectors, the individual weight of each coil being 1400 kilograms. The ELM coils will be delivered to the vacuum vessel using the through port transfer system. This 20 meter long delivery line is the workhorse amongst all the assembly tools, the jack of all trades. Once introduced into the vessel, the ELM coils are presented in their final orientation to be collected and positioned by the in-vessel tower crane. Each coil and feeder has its own dedicated lifting frame, ensuring that the components can be safely lifted and manipulated. Tooling installed by hand in the final position awaits the offloading of the coils into a standoff position, approximately 400 millimeters from their final position. The tooling design allows the final positioning to be carried out by hand to allow accurate final location with close visual inspection by personnel on a mobile work platform. The feeders are installed following the same procedure. Next in line are the blanket manifolds, the inlet and outlet pipe bundles that will supply the cooling water for the blanket modules. Because of their physical size measuring up to 7.5 by 3 meters and a weight of 400 up to 600 kilograms, the technique used to introduce them to the inside of the vacuum vessel employs a guide roller on the edge of the equatorial port to allow the lower end of the manifold, mounted on its lifting frame, to be guided to the lower part of the vessel where tooling will locate and stabilize the manifold before it is rotated into a vertical position.
Once in the vertical position, the in-vessel tower crane will lift and transport the manifold to its standoff position on pre-installed tooling adjacent to its installed position. Here again, the final positioning will be carried out manually by personnel on a mobile work platform. Once all this is done, the vacuum vessel will be sealed, cleaned and prepared for the first pump down and, ultimately, a first plasma pulse. After this first commissioning of the ITER machine and following the installation of the final diagnostic systems, pellet injection and disruption mitigation system, the stage is set for the installation of the blanket system that provides shielding to the vessel and the superconducting magnets from the heat and neutron fluxes of the fusion reaction. For purposes of maintenance, the blanket wall is modular. It consists of 440 individual segments, each measuring 1 by 1.5 meters and weighing up to 4.6 tons. Each segment has a detachable first wall made of beryllium, which is why the vacuum vessel will now become a beryllium-controlled area for the remainder of the assembly process. Before these heavy components are lifted into position, a photogrammetry survey will be performed. This technology originally developed from the navigation system used on missions to the Moon, will provide the data required to accurately position and align the modules to form a smooth envelope for the delicate plasma. This huge task of customizing thousands of components to very tight tolerances is certainly not the most glamorous task of building a fusion device, but like all preparatory works, they are key to the success of ITER's mission. The installation of the blanket system will be, finally, followed by the diverter. Situated around the bottom of the vacuum vessel, it acts like a giant exhaust system, extracting helium ash and other impurities from the plasma. For maintenance purposes, the diverter is segmented into 54 cassettes, each weighing 10 tons. The heavy weights will have to travel along a complex trajectory from their transfer cask to their final position inside the plasma chamber, with pinpoint accuracy. Here it is handed over to a toroidal mover, which will take its precious cargo in a circular path to its final position. The locking of this massive component is performed without any bolting or welding, just by pure tension. The assembly crew, counting 35 people on average per shift, will work in two shifts during daytime. During the night shift, the welding performed during the day will be examined and installed components will be checked for their leak tightness. This operation will last about two years, 